Have you ever wondered what the last surviving house in your city will be? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. In the mid-1800s, Thomas Brennan rose to prominence as an inventor after moving to the United States from Ireland. He founded the Southwestern Agricultural Works, where he not only developed patents for, but also manufactured farm machinery. With his innovation and quality products, Thomas quickly gained a good reputation amongst farmers and a loyal base of customers. By 1884, he had amassed a fortune, and with his newfound wealth, he purchased an Italianate mansion in the heart of Louisville, Kentucky. The stately, all-brick home had originally been built in 1868, but with a few modifications and some remodeling, it quickly became one of the city's most envied mansions. Looking at the details all around the home, we can understand why it was touted as one of the most beautiful homes in Kentucky. From coins, to elaborate door surrounds, to iron verandas, no surface nor architectural element was left without the utmost attention to detail. Even the gallery porch on the side of the house, which would not have been visible from the street, was finished out with elaborate fretwork and balustrade. Most guests would have entered the home through the front door, styled in true Italianate form with curving and geometric patterns. Arriving inside, we are welcomed into the stair hall, where millwork seamlessly follows the rise of the stairs. The newel post, standard for the time, was accompanied by wooden balustrade, and if we look closely, we can see the print of the original wallpaper subtly appearing in the background. To one side of the stair hall is the drawing room, arranged as a double parlor with twin fireplaces, each with gilded mirrors, positioned on either side of a bay window, which was large enough to house a grand piano. Crystal chandeliers were suspended from gilded plaster medallions and centered on gilded pier mirrors placed between the windows on either side of the room. For all the grand details, let's not forget to take in the smaller, more delicate details, such as the gas lights affixed to the walls. When switched on, the lighted glass flower petal would have glowed and flickered, subtly illuminating the corners of the bay window at night. Directly across the stair hall from the drawing room is the library, with glass-paned bookcases appearing on three of its walls. In the center of the room, resting on the desk, is a Tiffany lamp signed by Louis Comfort Tiffany himself, a prized possession of the family. Towards the rear of the house, just beyond the stair hall, is the dining room, decorated with portraits of the family and the souvenirs which they collected while vacationing in Europe. The fireplace, a true piece of old-world artisanry, features stone relief work of cherubs amongst fruiting vines. And, in the background, we can take a closer look at the leaded glass windows with immaculate craftsmanship. Heading upstairs, we arrive at the second-floor stair landing, from which we can begin exploring the bedrooms. The first room we will see is known as the Southwest Bedroom, decorated with heavy, wooden East Lake furniture and featuring a marble fireplace with a decorative cast iron summer cover. The central bedroom has unpainted millwork and floral wallpaper, which might be too busy if not for the subdued antique furnishings and all-white bedspread. Finally, we will see the Northwest Bedroom, dominated by an intricately carved four-poster bed facing a bay window. As time went on, the house was passed down to Mr. Brennan's son, a doctor, who added several additions to the house, including a medical office with its own entrance for patients. The mansion stayed in the family until 1963, when it was bequeathed to the Filson Club, which created a non-profit society to preserve and maintain the house. Thanks to its preservation through various organizations, it has weathered the passing of the ages and survived urban expansion to be touted as the last remaining single-family residence in what was once an incredibly desirable neighborhood. Did you have a favorite room? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.